Walawani everyone, welcome to this Darawa language lesson, What Fish Is This? My name is Alexis and I am coming to you today from Ewan country on the south coast of New South Wales, about three hours south of Sydney. Um, today we are celebrating Sustainable Seafood Week 2022 and we're giving you the first ever glimpse at this newest resource from the Marine Stewardship Council's program, Saltwater Schools. We really hope you enjoy it and we hope you've had a chance to get your worksheets handy. If you have the worksheet, write the name of the different fish and marine species that you learned today next to the different species and you can share them with your class afterwards and you can watch back on the video afterwards to check that you got them right. Without any further ado, I'll send you over to La Perouse and you can go on a little walk with Laura Wells and Ray Ingray and learn all about Darawal culture and sea country. Hi and welcome to the MSC Saltwater Schools Darawal Language Program, What Fish Is This? My name is Laura Wells, I'm an MSC Ambassador, a Science Communicator and I love everything to do with the ocean, especially teaching people how to protect it. I'm coming to you today from Gamay country, but I would love for you to acknowledge what country you are on. Either put it in the chat or pause the video and give an acknowledgement to country to your class. Nagambi Ngagang Rayingray, Gamera, Nalamangai, Biri Nguli, Nguru, Nalamangai, Gamringa, Darwalanga. My name is Rayingray. I'm standing here at Botany Bay on the lands at a Bidigal clan group, and I'm speaking to you in Darawal. Hey Ray, how are you going? Good, yourself? Good, I'm really excited to go for our walk today and learn all about Darul language for marine species. Now, make sure you have your worksheet ready at home because we are going to be learning so much today. But I want to know first, Ray, what is your connection to this beautiful sea country? Well, we're here in Gamay. Um, my community, the Lapa Aboriginal community is just here on the shores of Gamay. Um, and we're saltwater people. So we live um, here all year round we survive off the sea, um, we're saltwater people. I feel like I'm a bit of a saltwater person too. I love the ocean and I love helping people learn how to protect it. The MSC says that sustainable fishing is fishing in a responsible way where we don't take too many of one species so that they can't reproduce or grow faster than how many we take. What does sustainable fishing mean to you and your people? Well, Aboriginal culture was always about living sustainably with, with mother nature, with, with our country. And um, so when we go diving or when we go fishing, we always take just what we need. We never overfish because we want to make sure there's enough there for the next time we go fishing and also for the next generation. I feel like Western culture has learnt so much from the indigenous practice of sustainable fishing that we've incorporated it into all the laws and regulations as well now, which is great. You set such a beautiful example and continue that on into the future. Should we go and learn a little bit more about Darawal language and everything that we can find yep. in this area? Yeah, let's go for a walk. All right. Okay, Ray, what do we have here? We've got a bit of a signpost um, of two mara, um, which in um, English is mala. mala. And um, so it's so mara. Mara in Darawal, wow. yeah. And if there's a big body of Mara, we would then say Mara Mara, so we just re repeat the word. Um, Mara is a um, seasonal food source for our people and um, our men would net these um, every time a particular plant tells us that they're on and our relatives from the south tell us that they're coming up from, from the Illawarra, um, they'll get the boats and nets ready and they'll, they'll net these only, and only get enough to, to feed our mob here. That's incredible. So you use a plant that blooms at a certain time to let you know that the mullet should be in the area. Yeah, once it blooms and it hangs right down real heavy, that indicates um, that, that the mullet will be arriving very soon. So we start to get our nets and boats ready. Wow, that's incredible. You use land to teach you about the sea. Yeah, our country talks to us. So both land country informs us what's happening in the sea also. 
Incredible. All right, Mara. Mara. Let's see what else we can find. Ray, this looks like a whole ecosystem here and a lot of different fish. What's the actual name for fish? So any type of fish we call it done, um, but each individual species has its own individual name. So if it was a snapper, we'd call it wallamai. Wallamai. Wallamai, yeah. If it was a brim, bari. Bari? It, yeah. So yeah. wallamai is a snapper and brim is bari. Bari, yeah. And if it was like a blackfish, it could be wagal. Wagga. Yeah, oh. so we have different names for each of the species of fish. Okay. And fish is dun? Dun. All type of fish all could be called dun. Okay. Yeah. I wonder what kind of dun I'm going to have for dinner tonight. Well, <laughs> yeah. I like waterbugan, which is whiting. So Whiting. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. do you get whiting here in Gamay? Yeah, you get, not, not as like you used to, but yeah, you still can get a good feed. Yeah. And you catch them with nets too? No, um, sometimes I'll pick them up in the nets, but our young ones like to um, dive and with the fishing spear. Um, yeah, or fish on the line, so okay. it's pretty fun. Okay, here we have an octopus, which is one of my favourite sea creatures. What do we call an octopus in Darawal language? We call it Junga. 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 And um, you'll find that word is shared also with our, our neighbours to the south of us down. Um, past the Shalaven as well. They refer to octopus as Junga as well. Do you find uh, Junga here in Game? Yeah, yeah, you find them um, in the rocks and if they're together, we tell our young ones not to take them because they're mating, they're mm -hmm. partners. But if they're by themselves and they're of a good size, yeah, our young ones are uh, taught to dive and grab them by hand. Wow, that's incredible. And here we have a crab as well. What do we call a crab? We've got two names for the crab. We've got Gariga and Galiga, and the, the difference between red and blue. Uh, Galiga for blue and Gariga for red. Okay. And um, that one there's a blue swimmer, so he's Galiga. And um, he's nice eating too. <laughs> so you like the Galiga rather than the Gariga? Yeah, we've got to go around to the next beach where the warm water comes out. Um, and they like to rest there, and that's where we go diving. But we only take the males. We don't um, take females that have got eggs. Okay. Um, when they're mating and they're out. So we'll just take the males and, and leave the females. So it's a great sustainable fishing practice for the crabs to leave the females with the eggs so that they can provide for the next generation. Yeah, it's against our rules to, to be grabbing female ones. And we teach our young ones that as well. Wow. Ray, I'm learning so much today. Let's go see what else we can find. Well, Ray, it looks like we've got some done here and is this all about how fish were caught? Yeah, this panel, um, it's seen better days, but uh, this panel explains how fish were netted. Um, it's a practice that only happens uh, once or twice um, each year now, um, where when I was young, it would happen all the time here, um, right, so, just on Lapa Beach. So you would net, you used to net all the time? Yeah, old people would sit up on the hill here and they would be watching for the schools of fish and they're able to tell what type of fish by the colour and they'd be able to tell how, how much was in those schools by the, the size of the shadow. And um, when we were young, we would hear them call out and we'd all rush down. Mostly young kids get in the way, but we would help by pulling the net in and we were able to take a fish home for, for dinner. What's the Darawal word for net? We use gama, which is our traditional word for a netted bag or a netted, um, like a net that we would catch small birds with. Um, and the actual fishing net, like the long fishing net, is something our people adapted um, when Europeans arrived. Right, so gama, gama to catch, done. Is there a word for catch? Yeah, we use munda. 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 Munda means to get or to grab or catch something. So gama to munda, done. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> uh, these also kind of remind me of the ocean. What's the Darawal word for ocean? We use gatu. Gatu. Gatu and gatu um, is something that can represent a big body of salt water or, or the ocean to the east of us. Okay, well, it's getting pretty wet out here. Should we go inside and have a look at my specimens and you can teach me all the names of those as well? Yep, let's go. Ray, we've managed to escape the rain and behind us is this beautiful painting by Gary Purchase of a humpback whale. What is the name for a humpback whale? Um, we call him Buri Buri. 
Puriburi. Puriburi, and he's a spirit ancestor, or one of our main spirit ancestors for Dharawal people that uh, refer to themselves as Garungul or saltwater people. So the humpback whale is really important to the saltwater people here. Yeah, we um, see it as a, um, it was a creative being um, in our dreaming. Um, it created certain landscapes, um, including islands in our country. Um, and yeah, really important um, animal for our, for our people. So protecting the humpback whale is really important to you? Definitely. Um, it's, it's one that we see as one of our old people because in our dreaming story, he was in human form before it turned into um, Buripuri as we know him today, um, with other animals as well. So, um, yeah, very important to us. It's a beautiful painting. Incredible animal. Well, I now have a few specimens that I've collected over time, and yep. I was wondering if you can teach me the names for them. The abalone. We call him uh, Gurung. Gurung. Gurung, yeah. And um, he's a good food source for our people um, and the smaller shells we also used as part of decorations um, on our necklaces and armbands and stuff like that and um, the men would wear them hanging up and all the women would have a number of them hanging off them and even today they still put it in their shell works as their you know like um, their crown jewel sort of thing in, in the shell works that they do. Yeah. yeah, they're so beautiful. I mean, they're iridescent and they would look beautiful as a necklace. Yeah, yeah, it's nice and shiny. How would uh, you collect abalone? Um, they hold on to the, the rocks, so they suck onto the rocks. And if you're quick enough and strong enough, you can pull them off with your hand. Wow. Yeah, and um, but now today, because we've got to deep, um, go a little bit deeper, we'll use a knife to, to um, bring them off the, the they, rocks. They're so strong, I've never been able to pull one off a rock with my hands. I've always had to use a knife. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be quick. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the abalone, what about the oyster? Well, our Sydney rock oyster, um, which is, can be a little bit different to this mm -hmm. one, we call Biringa. 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 And, and the Biringa, um, for our oyster that we find around here on the rocks in particular, um, was a good food source for our, for our people. Um, our old women used to say when they were kids, um, along rock shelves, there'll be a, a lot of them, and the old women um, would then collect all dry grasses and lay them out and then light it up, and it would pop up and it would make it easier for the kids to go along and collect the oyster, the meat out of the shell. Wow, well that's a, such an interesting way to open an oyster shell. Much easier than trying to get that little knife you know, in there. Yeah, yeah, a lot <laughs> easier. So it made it a, lot, a lot easier for the women to go and collect, collect such a good food source. Mm, okay, excellent. There's so many foods that live in the ocean that are really accessible, isn't there? And would have been really important to your people and still are. Yeah, we use, um, we use those for our own food source or we use now today to catch um, other species in, in the ocean like done or mm -hmm. you know if we're going for particular types of fishes um, yeah it's something that we would use you know all the way through and nothing went to waste yeah that's the most important thing nothing goes to waste we want to use everything that we catch from the ocean it's really really important yeah okay I have one last one <laughs> it is the scallop have you got we a name for it I've seen and I've heard names for it, um, but in Sydney, where we're based, we're what we call first contact people. So we were very impacted by colonisation and then government policies. So some of our words didn't survive. Um, there is some documentation of it, but I'm not confident they'll be saying it at this stage. Um, but definitely the scallop um, is something that our old people collected. And um, it's very good even today with a bit of garlic butter. <laughs> Definitely. So uh, some words in the Darawa language have gone extinct. Is that right? Yeah, they've just, um, we haven't been continued to use um, regular like some other words that we continue to use. That's abundant. And that could be because some of the food source like scallops you don't really get here anymore. So it hasn't been carried on. You know, you get a lot more gurung and birinja than what you would scallops. Right. And that's what's so important about the work you do. You're trying to preserve this language, reclaim it and make sure we know it for the future. Yeah, language um, for Aboriginal people 
um, your language and your land go together or language and your country go together and they can't be separated and our language is what connects us in a spiritual way to everything within our, our country so it's really important for us to, to keep on to that. And just how you are preserving your language, we can also preserve things that live in our ocean. What is the best way that people at home and all around Australia can look after our ocean? Um, we respect our, um, our environment, our country that we live in. And so if everyone respected the ocean, um, only took what they needed and remember that what they're leaving is leaving for the, the next person to come along that's in need and it will be there for the next generation. Absolutely. So making sure we don't take too much. And also other ways we can look after the ocean is to look for the MSC bluefish tick. Whenever you're buying seafood, make sure that it's responsibly caught and you know exactly what you're eating. And also taking all of your rubbish away with you. So don't leave any plastics behind because we don't want any plastics in our ocean damaging our sea life, especially our important humpback whales. Yep. <laughs> All right, we have learnt so much today. Let's go through a list of what we've learnt. Mullet. Murrah. Murrah, okay. Uh, fish. Dun. Dun. Snapper. Well am I? Well am I? Uh, brim. Bari. Bari. Octopus. Junga. Junga. Crab. Garaga. Garaga, is that the, the blue one? The red oh, one. Ah, the red one. So Galaga close. is the blue one. Galaga for the blue crab and Garaga for the red crab. Yeah. Okay, how about net? Gama. Gama. Which is also our bag, and netted bag, bag yeah. as well. Um, catch. Manda. Manda. And ocean. Gatu. Gatu. Humpback whale. Buri buri. Buri buri. Abalone. Gurum. Gurum. And oyster. Bilinja. Bilinja. Oh, so many amazing words. Thank you so much, Ray. This has been mm. so insightful today, and I can't wait to use these words and teach other people them as well. Deadly. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Nandawabi, which is see you later in Darul. <laughs> <laughs>